and I believe God has kept you well. Today we shall begin our les lesson with the direction for the previous one. Remember, uh, we started one part of speech, and that is uh, adverbs. The other day I left with you an activity, and uh, if you can check here, we are actually going to begin with the correction. So you can cross check this one, and you confirm with the, your answers from there. Remember, the instruction was underline the adverb and specify the type. It's good for you to know the adverb and its type. Uh -huh. Number one was it rained heavily. I believe that one I underlined for you and you should have all got that right. Now, the real work started from number two. It rained yesterday. In the work I gave, the word yesterday was not actually underlined. The product was the answer. You were supposed to underline the word yesterday. And that is an adverb of time. If you have underlined that, your answer is correct. Number three, John is coming soon. The adverb in that sentence is the word soon. Which type is that? That is an adverb of time. Number four, she stays in Bali. There the answer was in Bali. And in Bali, that is an adverb of place. And we say an adverb of place answers the question of where. Number five, she entered the house hurriedly. That is an adverb of manner. It answers the question of how. And lastly, number six was she was sitting on the chair. The answer was actually on the chair. And that is an adverb of place. Now, for today, I would also like to give you a spelling activity. I would like you to write for me the following words. Get ready. You see the subheading, spelling activity. Get your book. The other side, write word. And another side, correction. Begin printing the following words. I'm going to give you 10 words. I hope you are ready. Some of you wait for the teacher to mention all the words. Write them on the chalkboard or present them here. Then you also copy and you see that you have got all. So please for today, don't do that if you have been reading it. So the first word you should write is Dutly. From the word Dutty. She was dressed Dutly. Number two, write the word Rudely. From the word Rude. He spoke to me Rudely. Number three, write the word Conclusively. From the word Conclude. I'm sure you know how to write compositions. Some people prefer ending with conclusively and they bring their point. Write that word conclusively. Number four, write the word speedily. From the word speed. He was writing speedily. Number five, write the word hurriedly. Hurriedly. I entered the house hurriedly. Number six, write the word knowledgeably. From the word knowledgeable. If you are knowledgeable, you do things knowledgeably. Hope you have got the word right. Number seven, the word is stealthy. From the word steal. If you like stealing, you are stealthy. And you do things stealthy. Uh, number eight, write the word publicly. Whatever is for the public can be shared publicly. Number nine is cruel. Coming from the word cruel. He dealt with me cruel. And lastly, write the word enthusiastically. From the word enthusiastic. If you are enthusiastic, you do things enthusiastically. You look up the meaning of that word in the dictionary. I hope you have finished writing those words. Yeah, now, you can compare with mine here. Take number one. Did you get it right? What was the word? It was deadly. Compare. Was that your answer? Clap for yourself. You can stand up and jump once. Okay, you can sit down now. Take number two. The word was rudely. Compare. Have you got that? 
Someone who has failed, left out letter E. Number three, the word was conclusively. Compare. Ah, have you got that right? Yeah, clap yourself. Number four, the word was speedily. That was the answer. Someone who has failed has left out letter I. If you are that person, make that correction. Number five, the word was hurriedly. You have seen the spelling. Number six, that was the answer. Knowledgeably, someone who has failed has left out letter A before letter B. Number, number seven, the word was still three. I hope you have seen the answer coming from the word still. Number eight, that is the answer. The word was publicly. No putting there A. That's the answer. Number eight, the word was cruel. From the word cruel. The marking point there actually is LL. Cruel. And lastly, the word was enthusiastically. Enthusiastically. If you're enthusiastic, actually, it means you are very, very happy. Now, we are going to continue. By the way, we have been looking at kinds of adverbs. We are many with more three, and the, they just have brief notes as you are going to see here. Let me take you to the next kind. The next kind. That is, uh, you are going to sit on the job on, the, on our wall here. That's our next kind of adverbs. Hope you are seeing. That is adverbs of duration. We have an explanation there. These adverbs tell us how long an action takes place. They answer the question of how. That is as simple as that. Those are the examples given to you as you are seeing them there. The first one there is 30 minutes. That one can answer the question maybe how long did you take writing your work? I took 30 minutes. If you are being very analytical, questions of how long are so common in section B. How long did the meeting take? The meeting took 30 minutes. The meeting took an hour. How long did the conference take? The conference took a week. So all those examples you are seeing answer the question of how long. How long did you stay in Kampala? I stayed in Kampala for a fortnight. I stayed in Kampala for a year. How long have you lived? I've lived for a decade. So our examples continue. A century, a generation, a millennium. All these are examples of adverbs of duration. In your book, if you are writing the work, I request you to write some four sentences of your own using adverbs of duration. I hope that would be difficult. You have had some examples of such sentences from me. Let's go to the next kind of adverbs. Adverbs of duration. Note that adverbs of frequency. Adverbs of frequency. That's our next kind of adverbs. As you have seen, these adverbs tell us how often an action takes place. They answer the question of how often. Examples are there for you. Which question can I ask you there? How often do you go to Kampala? In your answer, you may have that one which is appearing on the wall here. I always go to Kampala. So the word always is an example of an adverb of frequency. Why? It is answering the question of how often. And I think you can see here, this word is about, even you can see here. We have another example there that is seldom. How often do you go to Kampala? I seldom go to Kampala. Here you are still answering, here you are still answering the question of how often. Okay, let me take you back there. You are still answering the question of how often. Uh -huh. How often do you eat meat? I rarely eat meat. When you look at the word rarely, it is also an example of an adverb of frequency. The list continues. We have other words like ever, annually, usually, regularly, fortnightly, monthly, weekly, biannually. If this word is difficult for you, you can look up its meaning in the dictionary. 
biannually, that is after every two years. After one year, it is annually. After every two years, that is biannually. The list is long. All these are examples of adverbs of frequency. In your book, you are at least going to write for me four sentences below that using adverbs of frequency. Now, let's look at our last kind of adverbs. And uh, we have called them adverbs of degree. As you can see the explanation here, these adverbs tell us to what extent an action takes place. They answer the question of to what extent. Okay, you can see the examples on the wall here. The first example is very. You might have heard someone asking you that, how are you? And you say, I'm fine. Then someone poses the question and says, to what extent are you fine? You may reply and say, I am very fine. So that is an example of an adverb of degree. Another person might say, I'm extremely fine. I am quite fine. I'm too fine. I'm just fine. I'm fine enough. Depending on how the person is choosing to answer. So all these are examples of adverbs of degree. Okay. I would like to take you to another thing. I think we are done with kinds of adverbs. I'm taking you to what you are going to see here. That is comparison of adverbs. Remember, when you are learning adjectives, you looked at comparison of adjectives. Comparison of adjectives. Just like we have comparison of adjectives, we also have comparison of adverbs. And I believe this won't be difficult for you. We have one main point here for us to take note of. One syllable adverbs use er and est in the comparative and superlative degrees, respectively. When I talk of words like comparative and superlative, those are, I believe, not difficult words for you because you heard of them when you are learning degrees of uh, adjectives. Let's move on and see what we mean by this explanation. Once level adverbs use ER and EST, these are actually short, short adverbs. Uh -huh. As we can see them here. These adverbs are one level adverbs. Let's see how we are forming their positive, comparative, and uh, superlative degrees. The first one we have here, I believe you can see it well. The first one we have here is the word Ali. Ali, this one is both an adverb and an adjective. If you have proved that, you pick your dictionary and it will give you more explanation there. And how you can use it as an adverb and as an adjective. Its comparative degree is earlier and its comparative is earliest. Uh, if you take example number three, you have the word first, was driving first. Uh, was driving faster than so and so. That is the comparative degree, and the superlative is fastest. The list continues here. We have here the positive degree of this adverb had. Of course, it means had. The comparative, use the knowledge I gave you at first here. If you can flash back and say here, we say in comparative degree at er, and in superlative at est. So when you come here and I leave this gap, I believe you can complete there with the correct answer. How will you get the comparative degree? Go back and read that heading. You are just going to add here ER and the comparative of hard is going to become harder. Now lastly the superlative is hardest. Here I think I can now move faster. High, comparative, can you also say it? Higher and superlative and uh, complete there. I'll have to mark that one. Uh, Let this is the positive comparative degree complete. Superlative here is the latest. Here we have long comparative is longer and superlative complete there with the correct one. Our next one is near comparative degree complete. Superlative nearest. Uh, our next one is soon comparative sooner. And uh, the last one here, complete that. Here we have loud. This one is uh, an a, both an adjective and an adverb. Comparative degree, complete here. And lastly here, we have completed for you, loudest. Quick, quicker, complete here. 
fair, complete here. Superlative is the fairest. Uh, we have here wide, wider, complete here with the correct form of the word wide. Put the superlative degree there. Now let's move on to another thing here. Let's move on to another thing here. We are going to part B. Part B says adverbs with more than one syllable. All those that end with ly use more or most in the comparative and the superlative degrees respectively. This is what I mean. Uh -huh. When you see the adverbs we have on the wall, they actually have more than one syllable. And above all, they are all ending with ly. If you first say that you want to add here er, your answer will be very, very wrong. Okay. Here we have the positive degree, comparative degree, and uh, superlative degree. When you take here the positive degree of clear, clear of positive means clearly. The word clearly is an adverb. The adjective is clear. Comparative degree, more clearly. Superlative, most clearly. Smart, more smartly. Comparative, superlative, mostly, smartly. Happily, more happily, complete there. We have here hurriedly, complete here, the superlative here is mostly hurriedly. Next one here we have silent, comparative more silently, yeah, complete that, the correct one in superlative degree. We have neatly, complete here, superlative, mostly neatly. We have the next one politely, comparative, more politely, superlative, superlative complete here. We have humbly. Comparative, complete directly, and superlative here is mostly humbly. Last one is heavily, more heavily, complete here. The list of adverbs here are many, but of course I just picked few here. How can we apply these adverbs in sentences, or a comparison of adverbs in sentences? And that's our next subheading here. No, not at all. We are going to look at part C first of all, irregular comparison of uh, adverbs. This one means they don't have a uniform way of forming them. That's why you're saying irregular. They are just formed. There's no uniform way of forming them. Number one here we have far, comparative, father, superlative. Here we have fathers. Of course you have to take note. You may wonder why I repeated the word far and you have to understand how to use the two of them very well. The, the father with A here, this one of course tells you more about the distance. This one tells you more about distance, and the father with you tells you more about time. Mm -hmm. The father I walked, the more tired I got. The father I walked, you mean the one with A, that is distance. Then this one, father, it's the one of time. If you say, I have gone for further studies, you are meaning this one here of time, because they are going to take more time. Take note of that, their scholarship forms are given here. Much, comparative is more, scholarship is most. We have this word well, uh, comparative is better, superlative is best. We have ill, comparative, worse, uh, superlative, no, 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 comparative is worse, and superlative is the worst. And lastly, we have little, comparative is less, and superlative is the least. I'm now taking you to what I was saying. How can we apply the comparison of adverbs in sentences? Look at uh, our example number one. Here, if they are testing you, they will put the word in brackets. They can use any form. The word, they can make it a noun. They can make it an adjective. They can make it an adverb. Then it's upon you to change that word and give the correct comparison. Of course, while applying the adverbs. <coughs> Let's look at number one here. The visitor arrived earlier than expected. This word underlined is an adverb. Hope you are seeing that. Number two, the boy was more smartly dressed than the girl. The boy was more smartly dressed than the girl. Actually, here, my line should have been or not. More smartly. More smartly here. This is the adverb. We're not supposed to underline the word dressed. I think next time we shall not make that kind of mistake. We're supposed to underline more smartly. This is the, the adverb. Right? Uh, number three. This is the most neatly written work I have ever seen. 
if you check what you have underlined here is mostly neatly what you have underlined that is the comparison of adverbs if a child is false and put an adjective the answer will be wrong a child might say this is the neatest written work i have ever seen that sentence is actually not correct should be this is the most neatly written work i have ever seen let's look at number four here sarah speaks english more fluently than mary what you have underlined here here we are actually comparing while using adverbs lastly peter writes better than alex peter writes better than alex i believe you have already been following all this very well i now want to take you by giving you some activity here i don't know whether you manage my activity or you need more explanation but based on what i'm saying you shouldn't be able to give correct answers for this word while answering remember you are applying degrees of adverbs if you apply degrees of adjectives you are likely to end up with the wrong answers before answering you can even first go back and understand that work well like number two the boy was more smartly dressed than the girl someone wants to put a wrong answer might say the boy was smarter dressed that one gives a wrong answer the boy was smarter dressed than the girl not at all should be the boy was more smartly dressed than the girl if you apply if you study these examples well then you can be able to pass my activity here i hope you have been good to you've been good listeners as long as i would like now to give you an activity here that is our activity number one of course the instruction says use the correct form of the word in brackets to complete the sentence and the answer you're going to give should actually be an adverb i'm begging you number one paul writes dash than emma in two brackets the word is neat think of the correct answer there number two the boys were seated dash than the girls in two brackets comfortably number three of all the guests john was the dash dressed in two brackets smartly understand which degree of uh, adverbs you are going to use there number four that girl needs baskets dash than her sister in two brackets quickly and lastly our uncle visits us dash than our aunt in two brackets regular i believe you are going to be able to do those five numbers and uh, be serious as you are doing them remember to write organized work i would also like to end by advising you to stay safe and uh, follow guidelines from the ministry of health Thank you so much.